one whit about time management. Um, it just wasn't something I was interested in. I was much more interested in having fun. And I suppose I did. But that came at a cost, and I'm not going to go into those details. But suffice to say that when I got to Washita Hills College, and I was actually, I was serious about getting things done, I wanted to reform. I wanted to prove that, hey, I could actually do this. And so my first semester here, I set myself to do as well as I could. And so I remember my first semester, I looked at my assignments because many teachers would give them out ahead of time. It's like, all right, I'm gonna get this done. And I managed to finish all of my homework with about four weeks to spare. And I realized that was actually a bad idea because all my friends were really busy and I had nothing to do. So I'm like, hey, let's do something. It's like, I can't, I have a project. It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> so that didn't work too well, but in some ways it did work pretty well. Anyway, for about five semesters, I took 18 credit hours every semester, which was the maximum. And then my last semester, thanks to the opportunity of, um, I forget what it's called, Dis not distance learning, but correspondence classes, there we go. I managed to take 21 credit hours and I got through it all. And my grades were not bad. I had straight A's except for two classes during my entire time at, in the college here. And it wasn't because the college was easy. It was not easy. I worked hard for that, um, but I succeeded. Um, why do I tell you all of that? Um, because this talk today is about time management and I just want to say that I have some experience with time management. Um, I have learned things that work, at least work for me, and I'm confident will work for a good percentage of you all. Um, but this talk about time management is probably gonna be one of the strangest talks about time management that you ever hear. Let me explain why. Typically when we think of time management, we think of chunking the day into pieces. You know, you have X amount of time and I need to manage it. And so I need to divide this up into neat little categories of where my time should go. Does that make sense? You know, that's an important thing to do. You should be able to look ahead and say, well, I'm gonna need an hour to do this, so I'm gonna take an hour to do this. Totally reasonable. There is another element of time management that actually doesn't have much to do with time at all. And it's this. It's not about how much time you have, it's about how much do you do with that time. Do you understand the difference? One is about structuring time, but the other is about making that time more productive, efficiency, that would be another term. And what I want to talk to you today is about time management, but what I want is that you have more efficient time. Because here at OHA, um, the college students, they have more flexible time than you all do. You don't have such flexible time. And so efficiency, at least in my mind, makes more sense for you than you know, trying to expand the number of hours that you have just because your schedule is like so, and you all feel it. Good time management enables you to work smarter, not harder, so that you get more done in less time, even when time is tight and pressures are high. I pulled this off a time management website. Um, it's kind of like winning the lottery. I don't know if you've heard what happens to lottery winners, but I think if you talk to anyone about money, I would guess 99% of the people would tell you, I would need more money. They want stuff, they don't have the money to get it, and therefore, they want more. And so, when people win the lottery, they're very happy, because all of a sudden they have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. 
And so they have the ability to buy stuff. The trouble is that money does not last. It basically disappears into thin air. And you can probably guess why. They buy stuff. And so the money disappears. <laughs> and in a few years, they are usually broke back where they started. Um, the trick is that they never actually learned how to manage the money itself. They had so much money, but they weren't very good at using the money that they had. And so when somebody gave them a lot more money, well, they were still bad at using the money that they had. And so they didn't do any better with the millions than they did with the thousands. Time is similar. If you learn how to use time well, or how to make it more productive, you could be left with an hour and you'd still do a lot better than somebody with an entire day to do things. And I know I've experienced it. So I just want to cover four aspects of efficient time. The first is blocks. Now, what do I mean by blocks of time? If you have a schedule here, and you see all like the little slivers in there, and then do you see the big chunks? The big chunks are the ones that are more important than the slivers, at least in my experience. Why do I say that? Um, the challenge is when you are doing something is that you have to switch your attention from what you're doing before. So if I'm eating, and I need to start working on an assignment or a project, I have to go through a transition period of some kind. I need to get out my computer, I need to wash my dishes, hopefully in the reverse order. Um, I need to you know, get my mind into it, and it usually, usually takes me around 10 or 15 minutes to do that. Now, I've lost that. So if I'm working with a little, uh, if I'm constantly switching my tasks around, I constantly have to be switching my brain around, and so I lose a lot. I found it much easier to work with the big chunks of time, sit down, and do one thing until it is done. And that is a large part of how I succeeded. I figured out in the mornings that I had like, an entire four hours to do things. It's like, okay, my afternoon is shot because I have a whole bunch of classes, but I have this chunk of time here. I'm just gonna clear everything and do everything. And that's basically what happened. Um, I had a friend of mine, he, he was a very interesting guy. Um, none of you are like this. He could not control his mouth. Um, thankfully, none of you are like this to any extent like this person was. He had lots of energy, and it all channeled through his speech. And it's, it didn't, he wasn't so much about doing things, but about talking. And he was very intelligent. I'm, I'm not knocking him down. It's just the type of person he was. The thing is that he had so much energy and he was so bad at controlling it that near the end of his first semester in the college, he was getting almost straight Fs. And so he comes to me and he's like, Jensen, I'm not doing well. How can I do better? And so we sat down and I asked him, well, what does your schedule look like? And so he wrote out his schedule and it was, it was pretty intense. And I told him, okay, See these big blocks of time? That's your homework time. The little times between meals, try not to worry too much about those. Get the big ones down. It's like, okay. And I was shocked. He set himself to use that big chunk of time as well as he could. And within, I think, like two or three weeks, he had pulled his grade up from Fs to Cs. Now, okay, Cs aren't great, but you know, considering where he was, that was pretty good. And now he almost fried himself doing that too, but you know, at least he managed to do it. Um, so yeah, if you guard those big blocks of time, it really helps you to stay focused. Um, and yes, you can worry about the little blocks of time too. I was impressed um, 
when we had movie night a few weekends ago, um, that one, most students came in with blankets or laid on the floor, things like that. One student came in with their homework and watched the movie, did homework, and basically like got an extra hour out of the day. So it was pretty neat. The second thing is glucose. Now, some of you know what glucose is because we talked about this yesterday. Um, but show of hands, how many of you know, know what glucose is? Good, good. Um, glucose is the form that sugar takes in your blood. Um, it's known as blood sugar, typically. And the thing is that your body runs on glucose. Everything in your body, anytime you eat food, the food has to be broken down and either torn into individual glucose pieces, or if you have some other type of sugar like fructose, fruit sugar, it has to be changed into glucose and then your body can use it. Um, so your body runs on this stuff. Now, that's a glucose molecule. Don't worry about that too much. Now, your brain runs on energy. Uh, we typically use the illustration of a light bulb to illustrate your brain working. And that's very true. It runs on, well, glucose, basically. You may not realize how much. 20% of the energy that you take in is used by your brain. So that's a lot, considering that the brain doesn't take up very much space and it doesn't weigh very much at all, but the intensity of activity in your brain is so great, it needs energy. And so one of the nice keys to studying, or sorry, time management, is just simply making sure that you actually have something in your body to use. Um, I take advantage of this regularly because at night, I'm pretty drained. Um, in fact, I think it was Monday. Yeah, Monday. I was exhausted Monday. Some of my students noticed in my math classes that I was just totally, totally worn out. And by the end of the day, when I had gotten home, I was basically just dragging myself around. Um, but I have a little ritual at night. I like to eat fruit. And so I have, we, Janita and I bought like this 33 pound box of prunes. Anyone here ever had prunes? Basically like giant raisins. That's what I think of them as, they're delicious. Um, so I took some prunes, threw them in a blender, blended them up with water, of course, drank that, and I felt really good. <laughs> now, I mean, my body was still tired, but you know, I was thinking finally. And so it kept me going up until I had to go to sleep. Um, if I'm on a long drive, sometimes I get very tired, as typically happens on long drives. And if I just know I'm not going to make it, either I stop and rest, or I get some juice. And the extra sugar helps me keep going a little longer. So how does this translate to your experience? Well, looks like this. Um, if you have some type of exam or some type of study session, eat something. Very important. Especially something with easy to access sugar. Now, I'm not recommending candy because it tends to have a whole bunch of that sugar all at once, which is great like for 30 minutes after the meal, but if your class is two hours later, well, you're like down here by then. So you want something a little longer lasting than candy. Um, fruit does a very good job, especially for evening study halls. Um, keeps your brain running. And in the mornings, you'll want something more than fruit because your test may be sixth period just before lunch. Um, and try not to eat things that slow you down. Um, I've mentioned this before, but I have a pretty bad allergy to potatoes. If I eat potatoes, I am shut down mentally for five hours. And I, it's almost like clockwork. I can, when I take a bite of a potato and I start to feel its effects, 
almost exactly five hours later, my brain just kind of wakes up from the fog. It's like, whoa, what just happened? <laughs> so, <laughs> obviously, don't eat things that knock you out. The third thing is blood flow. This is somewhat related to the previous one. But the idea is that if, if your brain runs on glucose, it needs to get there. And the easiest, well, the way that it gets there is that it flows through your blood. Now, if you think about this, if your blood is not moving, your brain is not getting what it needs. And so if you can keep your blood moving, it'll get what it needs. So when I was here on campus for college, I took a tremendous amount of walks. Um, some of my classes, I had very thick books to read. I remember a book, um, it was like E.M. Bounds and something about prayer. And it's a thick book. I think it's like five or six books put together, if that gives you any idea. And, and it's a good book. But if I sit in my room and I would try and sit in my room and read it, and I'd usually like face plant into it because it was just tiring. So what I would do is I would walk around the loop all around campus, and I would actually do this sometimes for several hours while reading. Now, it's a trick to read when, you know, the book is bouncing and you're walking, um, but I tend to get better results that way than if I just sit down. Um, I've seen this in other ways. Sometimes if I'm working on my computer for several hours, um, my eyes start to hurt, and they start to hurt a lot. Uh, there was one time I was working on an eight-hour project, and I was so intensely focused on this project that I just did not get up. Um, okay, I think I, I ate lunch in there somewhere, but anyway. And by the end of the eight hours, my brain was just fried. It hurt. Like, it literally hurt. And I realized, oh, you know what? I didn't move almost at all today. And so, I, the next time I had to do an eight-hour cramathon or workathon, what I did is I set a timer on my phone for about every 20 minutes. And so, I'd work for 20 minutes, and then timer would go off, and then I'd go like this all around my house for about a minute and a half. Um, and then I'd sit back down, work for another 20 minutes, and I'd do the same thing. I'd march back and forth. There was one time, uh, we have an electric weed whacker, and so it's pretty easy to use. And there's one time where I was just feeling extra stressed. So I hooked up the weed whacker, put it outside, work for 20 minutes, and then I'd run outside and go like, you know, hit some weeds and just run around as much as I could for like three minutes, go back inside, keep working. And I found I could work a long time without frying my brain. It was very good. So yeah, if you take some breaks, it helps you a lot. If you exercise at some level, it helps you a lot. The last one is Sleep. <laughs> I see people nodding their heads already. I don't know if that's from agreement or lack of sleep, but <laughs> which happens, yeah. Um, why do I mention sleep? I mention sleep because, um, well, I'll tell you a story. I, it was Thanksgiving of last year, and I do some some online work, and for some reason, I was up at like 11 o'clock at night. I, I think I was, I was in my bed, and I was kind of restless, and it's like, oh, okay, I wake up. I decided, oh, well, is there any work available right now? And what I saw was that there was a project sitting there that was worth like $180, and I could do it, I knew, in about three hours. But if I didn't do it right then, it would be gone by morning because, well, it would just disappear. And so I thought, hmm, do I get sleep and skip the $180? Or 
or do I work on it and, you know, push myself a bit late? I decided to work on it. So I got up, turned on my computer, did the work, ended up going to bed around like 2.30 in the morning, made $180, I felt great until the next day. The next day was shot. I had nothing. Like, I basically traded the three hours at night for the next like 10 to 12 hours during the next day. And what I found is that all I could really do that day was just sit and either watch stuff or, honestly, no, that's, that's about all I could do. <laughs> I was totally wasted. Um, when we don't sleep, how can I put this? Well, I think of it this way. Somehow, and this is my, my theory, when you don't sleep, the brain doesn't seem to fire as forcefully. I don't know if you realize it, but the strength of your muscles and the strength of your thoughts depend entirely upon, upon how forcefully your brain can work because it's an electrical impulse <clears throat> or rather a group of impulses. And the stronger that is, the more forcefully you can do things. So for example, I notice that if I don't get much sleep and I try to exercise, somehow I just cannot exercise as much as I did before. Um, oddly enough, it's hard to sing. Um, if I have good sleep, I, t I have pretty big lungs, and so I can project pretty well. But if I don't sleep, it's like I can't actually breathe properly. I don't know how to explain it, but I, I literally start to feel dizzy when I sing. It's almost like I'm not getting enough oxygen. But if I get plenty of sleep and I sing, I'd feel great, and actually, I, I can be way too loud, um, which is not good. <clears throat> it may look like a good idea to trade a few hours of study for a few, like, trade a few hours of sleep for a few hours of study, but the problem is that once you get to the exam, your brain is not working as well as it did before. And so, you cannot recall things as easily because your brain is not functioning the same way. And it works the same way with your homework. If I'm trying to prepare for classes and I have not slept, I can stare at a computer for several hours and not make any progress. But if I've had good rest the night before, sometimes I can get ready in just a few hours for the entire week. And it's not that I've suddenly gotten smarter, it's just that my brain is easy, it's easier for it to wrestle with complicated ideas and to come up with solutions and to think of new ways of doing things. So it makes my time much more effective that way. I've said a lot, so let me review. Time management is not just about structuring time, it's about making the time that you have more productive. If you put your, if you use the big chunks of time, it's more efficient than spending a little bit here and there. You'll get more done. If your body is properly fed, your brain works with greater energy. It's easier to think and you get more done. If your blood is flowing, it gets more nutrients to the brain to actually do that type of studying or the type of work that you want to do, and you get more done. And if you get proper sleep, well, everything goes better. Yeah, I hope that's helpful in some way. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, Thank you that you teach us how to use our bodies well. I ask that you help the students to be as productive as they can be. There is much potential that you've put in each one of them, and my prayer is that you would help them bring it out. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Thanks for watching our assembly here at Washita Hills. We hope you received precious information. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also tap the notification bell before you go so you know when we upload the next program. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. The links are in the description below. Have a great day. In the meantime, stay safe.